Hello and welcome to my next rugby vlog. Today we'll be discussing the results of this weekend's international rugby matches. Stay tuned. So first of all, we had Argentina against Scotland. Really good match and both teams were playing really hard, but their finishing was not very good. Both teams were throwing a kitchen sink at each other and uh, fortunately, Scotland came away with a hard-fought victory at the end of the match. Again, as I said in my previous video, Scotland should keep players like Hugh Jones on the field. And he showed, once again, why he should be there. Hugh Jones again, with a big leg drive, gave a good pass to Sean Maitland creating a try. This could be a question is, why is he playing for Scotland and not for South Africa? At the end of the day, Scotland got the victory on the last minute with a penalty. I'm really glad that Scotland won because they're playing really good rugby. And while Argentina, you know, it wasn't a bad game. So at the end of the day, really close. The next match was Italy against South Africa. You know, on a terrible surface, we have no excuses. But Italy deserved to win as a, a bad Springbok side turned up to play for the day. With that said, Coach Alex Tukutsia hits rock bottom with his Springbok team. He needs to fear for his job at the moment. I have one question for that game as well. Italy had a yellow card and in 10 minutes we only secured 3 points with a penalty right in front of goal. We could have gone for the line out, we could have gone for the scrum and maybe converted it to 7 points. Why did we make that decision? There was also really poor finishing from South Africa. With this match gone, I would like to start a discussion on how we are going to fix Springbok Rugby. Please leave your comments below and I'll make a video later on on discussing them and then deciding what we should do. Italy, All Blacks, here we have it. I said the All Blacks will bounce back and they did. Uh, really undisciplined game though. All Blacks playing as if they wanted to take people's heads off. At the end of the day, they defended well, they attacked well, and uh, the Irish was just, sometimes they didn't know what to do with the ball. Irish now complaining about Yaku Paper and, and how the way the All Blacks played. Uh, they also say the two tries were questionable. Let me show you the two tries, and you guys can comment and decide on whether it should be given or not. New Zealand 7. Smith delivers to Bowden Barrett and he attacks the base and he's gone. Pace, space, try. They want to go up. Miles, can you see it? Can you see a clear grounding? I can see a clear grounding. So you can see the ball grounded on the grass. Yes. Thank you. That's a try. New Zealand come. This time it's Leonard Brown and then Bowden Barrett and then. The pass and the offload, and that is magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. Unfortunately for Ireland, Robbie Henshaw had to be stretched off the field after a head collision with Sam Kane. He could have made a difference in the game, but I think in the entire game, uh, Ireland, you know, they were a bit flat-footed on, on attack as well. Bowden Barrett again this weekend showed that he's the World Rugby Player of the Year with his line breaks, defense, and general kicking play. Well done again to the All Blacks, you know, bouncing back and showing why they're the best team in the world. Australia against France, you know, a new look Wallaby side turning up. I think that Foley is really doing a good job, much better than Great Cooper was. Um, Australians were also making a lot of turnovers, which were really good. Pocock being one of them, and Pocock being the captain, for the first time since 2012. One good thing from the French rugby is the backline looks really good, especially when they go wide. Again, this was a really close game. I called French will win. They lost by two points, so I'm happy with that. Again, the French, they made a bad decision. On 18 minutes with no penalty advantage, they went for the drop goal. They had ball in hand. They were in a 22 of Australia, and they just gave it away. Why didn't they just play the ball? They might have gotten a line break, scored a try, 
or just keep on playing and got a penalty. They could have then gone for the drop goal or just took the or just take the penalty. But with the Wallabies ever improving, I would say they they were really looking good. And with the, my try of the weekend is going to Kurian Johnny from the Wallabies with his try in the corner basically being out of touch. Check this out. 25 for Australia. Here's the replay. Wonderful, wonderful handling. Look at that. Great offload as well. And uh, in the build up to this. But that try, well, how on earth. Did... I leave you with a few good tries of this weekend. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Goodbye. Still advantage to Argentina. Back it comes to Juan Martin Hernandez. And it's Cordero in the chase. And Cordero gathers and finds taken in. And it's not. It's going to be a try. A try for Matias Orlando is there. The outside centre. The... Has it the hooker. Laidlaw looking and giving now to his backline. And Dunbar is in such a, a quiet game. The inside centre. And Scotland again. Every width given to it now. And Hugh Jones. Hugh Jones two shrugs off one man. Jones still going. Looking for support. It's there. Smith looking for it. Ireland told to get their hands off it. Aaron Smith once more. Bone Barrett, crossfield kick. They've got men out wide. Conor Murray is to make up huge ground. They're going to get there, are they? Yes, they are. It's the Run Nakatasi coming all the way back, really getting them under the on the front foot. And from there, uh, France were on the attack. Some really good play. Offloading in the tackle, which has been a real quality of this match. For the French side, look at that, sucking in three defenders and a good step back on the inside. And from there, Wesley Fafana just storming onto the ball. Australian defence was cut to pieces and this man sniffed the gap.